Hello dear champions, welcome to the game of the day. Today we are going to cover Abu Dhabi Chess Festival round 8, by white is playing Rahman Zaur and by black is playing Amin Bassem, strong grandmaster from Egypt, our good friend and an amazing guy. Let's get started, knight f3, knight f6, b3, g6. So here white is choosing some sort of Larsen setups, going with b3, trying to develop on the diagonal, black is choosing king's indian options, after bishop b2, bishop g7, e3 and castling. Here white goes d4, d6 and bishop e2. There are too many options here, logically both sides are going to develop the pieces and fight for the center, it happens, knight d7, short castle and rook to e8. Black would like to go pawn to e5, however they need more pieces to support the advancement. At this moment white is going a4, it's a tricky move. In a sneaky way white wants to go a5 and get a lot of space on the queen side. Sometimes it can be dangerous. Black decided to prevent the options. Going a5, knight a3. Now it's time to develop the pieces further. One of the options going e5 is doable, however it's gonna be a little complicated right now because there is options to take, take, queen e0 undefended, maybe some moves like bishop e5 or knight takes e5. In conditions when black queen is not defended on d8, we will not be able to take it back. For this reason, after knight a3, black chooses b6, trying to develop the bishop and take it to the long tag. c3, bishop b7, b4. White insists, saying, I want to play on the queen side. Okay. So what's taking this side of the board, we're gonna go for the other one. Black's now starting the actions in the center, pawn to e5, and this pawn is giving black some space advantage on the king side, we have pawn on the 5th rank, white has only on the 3rd one. Maybe a good reason in the future to start the actions. At the moment white continues pawn b5, well I understand the move, they would like to take some space. However, I'm not really thinking it's a great one, because the position is little bit getting closed on the queen side, and now black is kinda getting free, they can go to the other side of the board. Queen e7 is being played, first of all, bringing the pieces into the game. Knight to c2, and even rook a to d8. I wouldn't say this move is super required, however I like it. Bringing all of the pieces into the game is a very healthy chess concept. White continues. Rook to e1 and h5. Black is thinking about the attack. Why? First of all we have space advantage. Moving the push is becoming dangerous for white. In some occasions we may advance it whenever there is no knight, it's giving us some additional squares for the pieces. White queenside pieces are a little bit out of the game and we might be able to pressure an opponent's king. This is important attacking concepts. Many more we are talking about in the course attack like a viking, take a look at this if you are not feeling comfortable when attacking. So white here goes to c4 and knight e4, good move, it's a central square. First of all we are opening up the way for our pieces, letting them to join the game as well. Secondly, in some occasions this knight is attacking on the pawn chain, have you ever seen the tactics when let's say we are capturing and something like queen e3? I'm not saying this happened, but it could be a motive, keep in mind. White continues, bishop to a1 and knight df6, another piece goes into the game. Now black has a very dangerous threat. Can you pause the video and think about it? What black would play? The dangerous move is the other knight. It's going to g4 and suddenly f2 is we hanging. Gonna be too difficult to defend it. So understanding this, white plays h3. However, this pawn now becomes a target. We can use this pawn to open the position and Bassem immediately uses the chance playing g5. g4 is a big threat. White needs to defend, going knight h2. At this moment white player feels like ok, g4 is not coming, I have 1, 2, 3 defenders. Most probably at this second I am doing fine, we'll be able even to go bishop e2. However Bassem doesn't think so. Black here plays pawn g4. This move is very complicated and there are many variations behind, just let's understand the motive. First of all, white pieces are far away and black pieces are near to the king side. And secondly, we have a space and territory for the attack. Of course, some variations later on are concrete. Here white captures, pay attention, not pawn takes d4 but knight takes, because the farther idea is really impressive. Knight takes g4 and now, if black is capturing the knight. After queen g4, first of all we are losing a lot of material on the king side, so we lost the pawn and exchanged too much. Queen will become a good defender. 
But Sam is like, okay, keep the knight. I go queen h4. From the first view, it's like, a, are you losing a piece? But not at all. Black has everything calculated. Only available square for the knight is on h2. However, white cannot play knight h2. Black's winning here very quickly. For those of you who are familiar with the mating matador course, you will be able to find a nice mating pattern. So, we go queen f2 check, king h1, and a g3 checkmate. King is sealed here. Doesn't move for white. After knight takes g4 and queen h4, white cannot play as well f3, because now we will take the knight on g4. And after a pawn takes the knight, the g3, a killer pawn next to the king, very dangerous queen h2 mate, is unstoppable. White's losing here as well. For this reason, after queen h4, white's playing g3. So now you may be thinking, okay, black's going to take the knight and equalize the material, but not at all. If we exchange the queens, this is the super important attacking piece. Immediately black's attack will be over. White will be able to take, pawn takes, let's say defend the square on f3, so don't allow knight g5, for example, bishop g2, and position is absolutely fine. After g3 move, black is going for the next decision. What would you play? Just for a second, think about it. There is a big pressure on the pawn chain and we are feeling super happy to take. Now pawn takes g3 is being mated. Queen takes g3, bishop g2, queen takes g2. So for this reason, knight g3, white has to go bishop to g2. Bishop takes, king takes. Now we can't be capturing the knight because our knight is hanging as well. Basim plays another good move, knight d4. White black is just, just a piece down for a pawn, but this king is so weak. Our pieces are nearby, some threats are coming. Rook e6, g6 is always possible. At this moment, white continued pawn to f3, trying to keep the knight and attacking on the other one. However, this weakens a lot the square on g3. Black's immediately, sorry, black's immediately using this. Queen g3 check, king f1. Again, black is not capturing the knight, not to give up this one. Trying to keep the tension. I like really the way of playing. Black is having a lot of chances to simplify, maybe sometimes go for a bit better position, but keeping the tension all the time. So now knight g5, knight and pawn f3 are hanging at the same time. White cannot defend both, so they continue knight f2, and knight takes f3. Now the rook is under attack. However, rook e2 is not possible. Black's here mating in one, queen to g1. For this reason, after knight takes f3, white continued king e2, but now already king is getting under black's heavy pieces. Capturing the rook is optional, however, black decides to firstly open the position. e takes d4, this knight is important please, taking away some squares from white king. If now white is playing, bishop takes d4, black here wins in a beautiful way. Knight takes, knight takes d4 and rook e3 check, just crushing this king's position. If now king goes to d2, f2 is hanging, and if here white king is going to f1, we play rook e1 check. If king takes only one, we are playing queen c3 check, winning the piece. Otherwise after rook e1 check, if queen e1, bishop takes d4, black is just winning. For this reason, after e takes d4, white can't again try to keep the rook and capture on d4, but they go rook to g1. However, now this king is too much naked. From the first view, capturing on g1 looks great. However, black player 2700 GM is using all of the chances. He continues the attack. Amazing move played here by black player. Rook e3 check. White is forced to take and only now knight takes g1. After queen takes, queen e3 is a very powerful check, and white king is in a super tough conditions. Let's don't forget that during this period, for a piece, black gate already, one, two, three, and even four pawns, it's more than a piece. Now if white goes king f1, black just plays a strong healthy chess, bringing the inactive piece into the game. Rook e8, taking the open file, creating some checking threats, winning the bishop, this king will never find a safety. Same happens after the check when white goes king to d1. This is what was played in the game. Still rook e8, queen e2 now is a checking idea, and many more. White tried to bring the defender into the game, rook e3. Looks beautiful, using the third rank for the piece, however, it's too late. Black plays queen e2 check, king c1, and capturing another pawn. 
at these kind of positions if you don't see how to win immediately. This is not a bad strategy. To collect the material and at the end of the day now, black is not being something done but has 5 pawns, 5 pawns for a piece. It's too much. However, the attack is also going on. King b1 and how to use the rook. In the course about speedboat adventures when we use the heavy pieces, we say that on the open file, 7th or 8th ranks, now accordingly the 2nd and 1st, are the best one for the heavy pieces. So rook e2 and now so many things are hanging. For example, bishop on b2. White continued king a1. At the moment, any piece, any move, I'm sorry, is winning. But let's find the beautiful way how black finished. Pause the video and crash the game. So, since the bishop is defender on the long diagonal, we are getting rid of it because we have our own monster. So rook takes b2, if now king takes d3 check, king b1, queen c2, this was mating, after rook b2 white continued knight d4, but gave up simply after rook c2 move. On top of enormous 5 pawn material advantage, black's winning with rook c1 check or pawn d3 checks, white cannot face all of these threats. So in this amazing way, black's winning again. Once again, I will shortly summarize and mention. Black decided to start some attacking actions, because white was having a little less space on the king side, so a5 pawn was decisive, and some of the pieces were out of the game. Nice way of attacking, keeping the pressure, and I'm sure we can have a lot of takeaways from this game. Thank you for watching, GM Gabuzian was here with you, and I'm going to meet you in our next videos. See you there, bye bye.